also let me share my screen so that we can get started. Um, can you folks see the full screen? Slides? Cool, awesome. So hi everyone, uh, Mahaya Napirissimo, Senior Product Designer for the Release Stage, Release Management Group here at GitLab. And today I'm super excited to share with you some of the findings and deliverables we've been working uh, with um, to what we call deploy freezes with GitLab. And this is also a super cool story about how UX research, product design, product management, and engineering can work together to use uh, user insights to inform and guide our decisions. So quickly, I know we're all familiar with those screens. Um, release management uh, is part of the ops XCICG stage. We are building a lot of cool features uh, on functionality with respect to continuous delivery and release automation and deploy phrases falls into the release orchestration category. We just moved it from minimal to viable. And release orchestration is pretty much the ability to coordinate complex features, oh sorry, complex releases across projects in an efficient way, uh, leveraging of code behaviors. And some of my goals for today is to share results for the problem validation and to highlight the opportunities that we identified through the research and also expose how those, um, those insights influence the designs and the next steps that we are taking. Um, as for the initiative goals, uh, the business goal was to improve the competitive position of GitLab releases across team views uh, by administrating deployments and environments. And one of the ways that we can achieve that is by offering deploy freezes capabilities. And for our, goal, for our users, the goal is to be able to specify windows of time when deployments are not allowed for environments with GitLab so that they can interlock um, some internal policies with uh, CI, CD, and automation. But anyways, what are deploy freezes? I think we are very familiar with the concept of code freeze, right? Since first the companies that can be a super scary thing. Um, and deploy freezes and help ensure stability during those periods of low engineering support or activity, such as weekend, off hours, uh, holidays, and by stopping deployments and preventing teams from introducing new issues and from critical incidents to occurring. And typically, well, the more automated a deployment is, the safer it becomes. So the value um, that we are bringing here is to be able to set some specific timeframes uh, for and mainly enterprise and regulated industry. So supporting deploy freezes with GitLab would allow us to, to erode uh, some of the release orchestrations capabilities uh, the same way as our biggest competitors. Um, and as I mentioned, this is super common for regulator industries and some of the examples as, I don't know, in Black Friday or January sales, some e-commerce websites, uh, they need to make sure that the network traffic uh, is stable. And internally for GitLab, our main internal customers are production and the delivery teams. And we want to make sure that GitLab stable when we have big company announcements, live streams, contents, or when we are holidays, right? Um, so quickly, I'm going to go over what we learned from problem validation. It was a lot, <laughs> full disclosure. I'm just going to highlight some of the, the topics um, that really influenced the design solutions. So um, when we start talking about the value of being able to restrict deployments, timeframes, our product manager, Jackie, I saw she's in the call today. <laughs> Thank you for joining, Jackie. She turned into customer interviews to validate uh, some of our assumptions. Um, and she surveyed more than 200 participants and interviewed five, I think a total of five customers, three external and two internals to talk about deployed freezes. And the survey uncovered that uh, around 60% of the respondents, that's 150 users, need to support this deploy window, freeze windows of time um, in their companies. So if we assume that 50% of the GitLab users are deploying with GitLab, that will be at least 60% of those users that could leverage of deployment freezes. And again, regulated industries, they really need something like that. Um, and this feature would really um, allow us to reach tire organizations and really focus on that specific market. 
Another findings related to our customers, uh, we learned that build managers and release managers are the most uh, uh, benefited from this feature. Um, and the parties that typically set those free periods are leadership of engineering of some of organizations. And those responsible for enforcing the policies can include non-technical release managers, DevOps and software engineers, and dev team leads. So one of the things I want to highlight here is that when um, we talk about release manager, this role is this role is really um, it, it's really a mix in some companies. They really merge into one. So you have uh, DevOps engineers that do release management. We have release managers that still go and work with the code. So when we talk about uh, designing release management functionalities, um, it really have uh, to uh, pay attention on the expectations of familiarity that users have with developer-centered workflows. So that's why you're gonna see across this presentation two personas highlighted. Um, and some of the problems we identified was that while many users, they have to set those deployment periods uh, manually, um, and sometimes they have to do that outside of the system. So it's really like writing some uh, YAML uh, file and we don't really support this um, out of the box with GitLab. Um, the level of pain it causes when you cannot set the deploy freezes uh, easily, well, everyone pretty much hates <laughs> code freezes. Um, and there's a level of stress in teams when deploying or not deploying to production. So people often just trust their employees that they are not gonna deploy things, but because you don't really have anything stopping the deployment from happening, well, they can, it can still happen, right? Um, and we also seen customers writing their own YAML configuration um, and also some users, um, they already leverage of similar functionalities with Zivia Labs and also with GitHub. So there is a competition. Um, so some of the learnings that influence the user experience. Um, when I start working on the, the design phase, which is kind of funny because there's never like a single design phase, um, I break my tasks into pretty much four, four steps, right? So working with the PM to identify what is the main user story that we want to focus for the MPC, the scenarios and edge cases uh, that we discuss with the entire team, the acceptance criteria for the main user stories and the secondary user stories we identify, uh, and low fidelity prototype if that's necessary, and discuss and iterate the, the deliverables and decisions with the team and move to high fidelity prototyping. So I'm going to highlight some of these steps today. Um, and one of the ways we found um, that is super important for us and it really helps us facilitate the discussions is through the Think Big sessions. So I think some of you are already familiar with the concept. Uh, we discuss uh, every two weeks the ideas and solutions that uh, we have for uh, functionality. Uh, we discuss uh, things with the specific team DRIs and share also the research results that influence the decisions we make uh, on the fly. So I'm very lucky that my whole team uh, is very design minded. Uh, and after the sessions, we can really come back to the drawing board or the issue description and change the criteria uh, to make sure that we are all aligned um, with the evaluation and how the user insights are influencing our decisions. So um, by doing this type of exercises, of course, we also discuss things asynchronously. Uh, I learned a couple of things that influenced my design phase. I learned that we could specify deploy freezes using the cron syntax. That is something that is already in use in uh, GitLab. And also that the, the CI file would instruct the pipeline and the UI would be where users could set up the freezes. So that imagine that you are both, you have both uh, technical and uh, non-technical steps in this process. So UI versus uh, GitLab, the CI file. And we also talked about uh, how it would be great to automatically retire, retry the job and continue the deployment process freeze when it was over, uh, when the freeze was over or um, to just immediately uh, have the ability to um, bypass a deploy freeze. But we found that this was too large for the scope of the MVC. 
So in my user story, um, the acceptance criteria includes both user and front-end requirements. And in this phase, with these assets, we are already able to identify, for example, which GitLab UI uh, components do we want to use here? Um, does this form need validation? So everything um, is set for front-end and back-end to either go with, the, with the, the, the status of this user story or break into smaller pieces and different deliverables. So um, some of the assumptions that were validated by PM ended up guiding our decisions uh, were related to, as I mentioned, configuration on UI versus on the CI file. So we assumed that users wanted to administer and manage the freezes uh, per environment. And in the end, our decision was that, yeah, they want to set freezes uh, mainly on protected environments, but that we shouldn't limit th that to our users. So we're going to allow users to deploy freezes on all environments. Um, and this was broken into a development task. So you see here linked uh, an issue to set deploy freezes from the API. Another finding, um, sorry, I forgot I put this slide here. This, this is how it would look like. So uh, your deploy would skip if, your deploy phase would skip if uh, the freeze is set. So nothing really bad happens, nothing really breaks. You still be able to access your latest deployment and then resume once the freeze uh, date uh, passes. And the second exception that we had is that technical and non-technical users would be enforcing the deploy freezes, and that was correct. Uh, and because of that, we want to um, inform those users in the UI when a freeze exists in GitLab, so that even though you're not a release manager or a DevOps engineer, but you're consuming deployments, you can still know that, hey, I don't see my changes on uh, staging because a deployment freeze is set. So this will be a notification also too large for the embassy. So it was broken down into another task. And the last one was that there was a the assumption that was a conflict that people would want to set things in the YAML and in UI. And in reality, as we identified in the beginning, two different uh, personas. So uh, we will implement in the YAML and the UI so that both audiences can set a deploy freeze. So this was the UI UX task. And the final flow, uh, we're going to add a new section in the project settings where users can set and manage the deployment freezes. And in the, in the CI file, they can say, yeah, the freeze is active for uh, staging environment or a review environment. So there's a two levels of configuration there. So uh, we will be able to measure success when, first off, we can use deploy freezes. So internally we can dock through this feature. And also when we see an increase uh, for releases and also an increase in configuration and deployment freezes in the UI. Some of the next steps, this feature ended up being something that, um, yeah, it, it has a lot of possibilities and not everything fits in the MVC. So we have an epic for advanced deploy freezes and we are focused on the expansion of the deploy freeze window uh, restarting it automatically, uh, the UI component, overriding deploy freezes, and a lot of more things. So these are all topics that we still discuss in the Think Big sessions in the synchronously. A lot of stuff. If you're curious, I wrote a blog post about how we are collaborating in the release team and how we are improving uh, our deliverables by using user stories. So. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, nice insights there. So if you're curious and you want to have a conversation later on with me, please feel free to, to read and uh, I'm happy to have a chat. And as always, thank you. <laughs> and special thanks to uh, Laurie, Jackie, Nathan, Sean, and the whole release management team for being so uh, design minded and for helping us build amazing features. It's always a pleasure working with all of you. Thank you. This is great. I had a couple of questions for you, Hayana. Sure. Um, the first thing I want to say, though, is that the blog article that Hayana wrote is excellent. If you haven't read it, you should read it. I read it. I enjoyed it very much. Um, so question on the, the indicator in the pipeline. Are we doing anything more than disabling the deploy 
stages or is there some sort of a tool tip or message that indicates why they're disabled? Yeah, uh, let me share my screen. I think you're talking about this one here, right? Yeah. 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 So we do have, uh, uh, it's in the issue that I say that it's out of scope for notifications. So wherever uh, we talk about deployments uh, and environments, so wherever you see that deploy phase kit, we are going to add here deployed and then the reason. So one of my uh, suggestions is that uh, the tooltip, instead of just saying skipped, we'll say skipped, deploy phase is active. You know, yeah. So that we, we provide more context and also uh, some um, informative uh, banners in the UI. But this is also, uh, it's currently in the backlog. Yeah, okay. Um, and then my other question was, so, I'm in a deploy freeze, but I, I've pushed code and it's green and everything looks good. Now I'm just waiting for the deploy freeze to end. As a developer, how do I know, hey, now I can go back and kick this off for deployment? Um, Jackie, do you want to answer this one? This one is a bit more technical. So, uh, Chris, do you mind repeating your question? Because I think that right now we have this in the yaml file so it would be like a, a manual action of needing to commit new code to your yaml file but i i'm interested in hearing um if this was more about the ui interactions that we're looking at implementing in the advanced deploy freezes um yeah so i get that y'all can't do notifications as part of the nbc that makes sense right but as a developer how do i know like hey i've got another step that i'm i, I can take now without a notification. Yeah, so it'll be that the, they could get notified if their deployment is skipped. So they would, their pipeline just wouldn't be active. So it'd be like, you know how you get a to-do that says your build failed? That will likely render as well, just as a part of the build notification process. Okay, so there's some trigger that says, yes. hey, you got a thing to do. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording and we're um